Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. I have lots of things going on, so this video is going to be in this kind of selfie mode. And nevertheless, I have finished testing that Soyo B650 ITX SY Eternal motherboard, and it seems to be a hidden gem of a motherboard. The motherboard is still available for about 125-135 euros on AliExpress, and for this kind of money, you get lots of features, and at least my particular sample behaved really well under my test. So, let's go through my slides and see what exactly we get for the money, what works, what doesn't work. Let's quickly walk through the specification of this motherboard so you understand how well this Soyo B650 motherboard packed for a Chinese mini ITX motherboard. Obviously, we have socket for AMD AM5 CPUs, then we have two slots for DDR5 memory, then we have an M.2 slot for SSDs under this cover. We have PCI Express X16 4.04 expansion cards. Over here we have front audio and a USB port. Then over here we have USB 3.0 connector for the front panel and USB Type-C connector for the front panel. Additionally, we have four uh, SATA 3 ports, power connector over here and another one is over there. Then over here we have two ARGB headers and over here we have two 4-pin PWM fan headers. In addition to all of that, on the back side of the motherboard we have one extra M.2 slot for NVMe SSDs, so in total we have two. And finally, on the rear side or rear IO of the motherboard is also pretty rich. So over here you will find 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, 2 here and 2 here for total 4 USB 2.0 ports and then 4 USB 3 ports and one of them is Type-C. I believe this Type-C USB 3.2 gen, so it has double the bandwidth of a standard USB 3.0 port. On top of that we also have DisplayPort HDMI output and Wi-Fi exit for antenna. Antenna is included in the box with the motherboard and Wi-Fi 6 module is actually installed onto this motherboard, unlike many other Chinese motherboards that come with just empty box and you have to install your own module. Over here we have a microphone input, uh, speakers or headset output and we also have SPDIF connector for audio. I have never used it, but some people ask for it, so it's here. As you can see, this is a very good package for a mini ITX motherboard, especially for the currently asking price of about 120-130 euros. All of that would make no sense and no value if the motherboard would have lots of issues, so let's go into the test results. And here I really don't have much to say. I will just quickly mention that all the USB ports, SATA ports, everything works. And I even tested the USB ports with an external adapter for M.2 SSDs. So I was not limited with my Samsung T5 SSD. Instead, I have got a Samsung NVMe SSD connected through the adapter to the USB ports. So I can fully saturate the bandwidth. And yes, both of the USB 3 ports, the Type-C and the standard ones are provided providing the desired speed. Smart fan function also works here and we have two fan headers and both of them can be individually adjusted in the BIOS, but just like with any other Chinese motherboard, if you use three pin fans, those will rotate at 100% speed. PCI Express X16 is PCI Express 4.0, it's connected to the CPU and it works as X16. M.2 slots, both of them are connected to the CPU and both of them are PCI Express 4.0 X4, which is very nice. But they unfortunately or fortunately do not support M.2 SATA SSDs. With audio, Wi-Fi and network adapters I just didn't get any issues, it just works, nothing to complain about. BIOS is not possible to update from the BIOS UI, you would have to do this from a UEFI shell and that can be done using AFU EFI. My motherboard arrived to me with the latest available BIOS, but I still did BIOS update just to make sure that the procedure works and nothing goes wrong there. Regarding VRM, well, here I can't really say much because AMD Ryzen CPUs are pretty power efficient. With Ryzen 7 7700 with the PBO enabled from the wall, the motherboard, or rather the entire system, is pulling about 165 watts, which is significantly less compared to Intel counterparts. 
With such a low power consumption, temperatures of the VRM were actually higher on the back side of the motherboard where the VRM components are soldered than at the front and with my laser thermometer I was able to measure somewhere around 55 degrees Celsius after 30 minutes of 8064 stress test. Cinebench R23 scores with Ryzen 7 7700 were just under the Tech Power Up scores, but here it can be related to basically anything. It could be because I have different RAM, it can be because I have different version of a Windows, or it could be that um, this Sony motherboard is just not as good as uh, the high-end motherboard they used. For example, my multi-threaded CPU score without PBO would be about 18,330 points and Tech Power Up reports that their score was 18,720 points. So it's about 400 points difference and I find it just uh, negligible. If I enable PBO with the Soya B650i motherboard, then Ryzen 7 7700 scores 19,413 points. Power consumption jumps from 128 watts from the wall to 270 watts from the wall. Another interesting metric to cover is idle power consumption. At idle, when I have keyboard, mouse and monitor connected, entire system from the wall is taking somewhere around 36-37 watts, which is very good if you consider that the ancient x99 platform would, under the same condition, consume somewhere around 50 watts. But if I disconnect keyboard, mouse and monitor from the computer and uh, imagine that this is a headless server, then the power consumption from the wall is just somewhere around 20 watts. So in theory you could even consider using this motherboard for your home lab, NAS or uh, some mini server. Test results are pretty good, but how about the features? Well, here I don't have major disappointments either. Sleep mode works just fine, RAM timings can be adjusted in the BIOS and you can also use uh, memory XMP or Expo profiles and my DDR5 6000 memory kit booted with XMP profile using command rate 1 with no issues whatsoever. I was not able to have the same exact kit running on B760i motherboard using command rate 1, it would only run at command rate 2, but with B650i motherboard it works at command rate 1, no problem. Resizable bar works just fine, PCI Express brofication and speed selection is available in the BIOS. For PCI Express brofication, I am testing using my ASUS Hyper uh, PCI Express brofication card that allows me to install four SSD drives. Unfortunately, this is only PCI Express 3.0 card, so when I installed a 4.0 SSD that tried to use PCI Express 4.0 speed, my system locked down. Luckily for me, in the BIOS, there is an option to select a different link speed for the primary PCI Express device. I limited the speed to PCI Express 3.0 and then my ASUS buffication card worked just fine and all the installed SSDs were detected. Clear CMOS works just fine, restore and power loss works as well, RAM voltage can be adjusted from 1.1 to 1.6 volts. And the only slight disappointment comes with ARGB headers. The BIOS does not have any features or any functions to customize RGB headers. Open RGB software and Maxun RGB do not detect any compatible devices. To control those ARGB headers, you would have to use Soyo RGB software, which seems to be a branch or a modification of Open RGB. Unfortunately, I don't think they have followed the open source software practice and did not publish the changes. So you can only download binaries of the modified Open RGB um, software from the website. And that unfortunately requires a Baidu account to download. I was not able to do that, instead I received the downloads using some help from my Discord community members, so I'm very thankful for that. Link to download OpenRGB modification for Soyo motherboard as well as BIOS and other drivers will be in the video description of course. Finally, I can mention that CPU power consumption sensor works on the motherboard and it also seems like one of the motherboard temperature sensors are located somewhere close to the VRAM and the sensor provides the values very close to what I can measure with my external laser thermometer. 
What can I say for the conclusion? Soyo B650i SY Eternal motherboard seems to be one of the best, if not the best, mini ITX motherboard from AliExpress I have ever tested for the price. Still, just like as always, I need to remind you that AliExpress is a lottery. My particular motherboard works really well and I'm very happy with it, but yours might not be the same and you might also get some bad experience with some sellers or whatever other thing. When you're buying from China, you're not getting any warranty, any support and you're basically on your own. At the same time, Soyo seems to be positioning itself as an internal Chinese brand, their website is only available in Chinese, and if you would like to download something from their website, for example BIOS or RGB software, you would need a Baidu account. That's pretty annoying. If these things do not scare you off and you don't have any other option but buy something from AliExpress, then under my testing I can confirm that Soyo B650i is a very decent option, especially if available for the asking price, which is uh, right now about 125-135 euros. One last thing I would like to mention, a part of all the testing, is that in the BIOS I have found some ECC options. It is possible to enable or disable ECC option in the motherboard's BIOS. Unfortunately, DDR5 ECC UD memory sticks are rather expensive and for me to get a pair of 16GB sticks I would have to pay somewhere about uh, 350 euros and that's just way too much for me to spend to just test if the motherboard supports ECC. In theory, Ryzen CPUs do support ECC memory and the motherboard has this feature in the BIOS, so it might support ECC. If I ever get my hands on DDR5 UDIM ECC memory sticks, I will test it if I still have them on the board and will keep you updated either on YouTube or on my Discord. With that, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and somehow useful. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.